Um, just thank you very much for the invitation. I was saying to somebody earlier that all my friends were quite glad that I was being paid for somebody to listen to me talking about the time bank. I talk about it all the time. So. Um, as has just been mentioned, Argyle, I don't know if any of you have been, is, is a very uh, rural area um, with, uh, with small towns. We are here in Dunoon and our time bank covers this whole area here. So that in itself has, uh, has advantages and challenges as you'll face in Dumfries yourself. Um, in that area, in, in the whole of Argyle, we have uh, six time banks um, which are networked together. Each one is quite different, uh, has different uh, proportion of staff time, has different numbers of volunteers involved, looks a little bit different, but basically we all connect onto one uh, database so we can share with one another and support one another and um, link across the area. So. I'm hoping to see that's what will happen in Dumfries and Galloway because it does work. It means you've got the whole area covered without having to be in one base on its own. We got set up um, eight years ago, um, although I would say we've been at the strongest for the last four years, um, purely because nothing to do with anybody telling us this was a good idea except a, a lady called Verity came into the office, I work in the volunteer centre and said, do you have a time bank? And we didn't even, we never heard of it at all. And she'd come up from somewhere in England where she'd experienced this. So we looked into it, we thought, what a fabulous idea this, you know, as you've alluded to yourself, you know, it's like, oh, this is great, you know, we've got to do this. And it takes a little while to then get started. And we had a run of uh, small pots of funding, six or seven hours of staff time, and it just wasn't enough to, to give the thing a strong start. And we found by the time we'd got funding for more hours, we'd actually got a team of volunteers that had been involved from the beginning that were running it anyway, so <laughs> they're still involved. Um, and I think that's probably what you'll find. It takes a little while to see things actually happening in the way that you envisage them, but the consistency of having staff and volunteer time every day, running, seeing what else needs to be done, will actually make it happen eventually. Um, you'll find the things on this screen aren't necessarily what I'm saying, so keep reading. <laughs> um, we found, uh, I could talk all day about what a difference it actually makes to people's lives, but what I wanted to tell you before I give you some examples is uh, it works on so many, four different levels really we found in our guide and view anyway. On a very individual level, somebody would like to learn how to knit and they've earned some time credits by cutting somebody's grass. It works in the ways that have already been mentioned today. It also works for the voluntary organisations in the area. So organisations join Time Bank, they can give their volunteers time credits, which they can then use if they join the Time Bank, which gives them just a bit of an extra boost, really. It also means that organisations have started to exchange with one another on a slightly more formal basis. So they don't feel quite so bad asking for help with funding or asking to share somebody's minibus. It's all done through the Time Bank people share time and resources with one another in a slightly more formal way. It also works for businesses, we've got local businesses involved, so for instance with somebody that does uh, massage and therapy and they they need things like um, things picking up from Glasgow and it's quite a trek for them to go and quite expensive but if somebody's going anyway they can pick it up for them and they can have leaflets distributed by people that are willing to pace the streets and earn some time credits that way so it works on so many different levels, it's just a case of kind of letting your imagination run riot really and letting it happen. We've also found that it works uh, within Dunoon, which is, I don't know, I think slightly bigger than Newton Stewart, but the Cowell Peninsula has a, a very wide area, so we exchange in a very local space in Dunoon, but we can also exchange, oh the map's gone, we can also exchange a uh, with another area in Argyle, so for instance recently we had somebody who had family uh, videos, wanted them to be put onto DVDs, they got posted to a time bank member in Campbelltown, which is a good few hours away, and they earned time credits that way. We would also be, be able to exchange with you in Dumfries and Galloway, as, as you mentioned, uh, people can earn time credits and can ask, we had somebody in Edinburgh doing some shopping for somebody that wanted some mementos of where somebody grew up. They did the shopping and they banked the time and the things got posted over. Uh, in the summer we had somebody being picked up from a train station in Yorkshire uh, because they weren't really sure where they were going when they got off the train. 
um, to take them to a holiday cottage and they gave them time credits for doing that. And we've had bigger things like house moves. <coughs> so if somebody moved to Nottingham a couple of years ago that had earned lots of time credits and uh, they spent them getting help when they turned up in Nottingham, somebody was there to meet the van, help them unload the furniture. Mm -hmm. Already they've got a network of people in a new area where they had to move through work. So they weren't particularly happy about it and what a difference that actually made to them. We have been talking earlier about funding, we've been talking about the need for hard facts and figures and believe you me we collect them and we do, we do the mental health uh, questionnaires and all of those things and I'm happy to talk to you about them later, I don't actually have all those facts and figures with me, I thought it wasn't what you wanted to hear. But the quotes that you're seeing on the screen are the thing that give us the momentum that mean it's worthwhile. Uh, keep going. It's worth giving people these chances. Um, this um, a whole range of people, and we've found uh, up until this point, with a little bit of funding uh, through the Change Fund, that actually it was quite hard to keep the funding coming in for something very generic. But actually, that's been the joy of it. So, although some of the funding for town banks might come for older people, it's the mix of people that make it happen. So. Our youngest time bank member is seven, and our oldest time bank member is 96. <laughs> um, we've had, uh, we've got people who are unemployed, we've got people who are in full-time employment, we've got people who run their own businesses, um, people with physical health problems and mental health problems, and everybody is equal, as has already been said. So that, that mix is what makes it come to life, really. We find um, first time you meet people, people fall into two categories. Uh, I don't have anything to give or I don't need anything. And what I find the joy of the time bank actually is in getting rid of both of those misperceptions really. Everybody has something to give. It can take a bit of finding sometimes, not because people <coughs> don't have anything to give, but because they perhaps don't realise what value they have. They've perhaps been receiving a lot of help for a long time and have had those um, that sense of value taken away from them, not intentionally, but just because they've been receiving help. So spending time with people, getting to know what it is that they've got. Um, so one example I can give is an, an older lady who had had to give up her greenhouse and was really upset about not being able to grow tomatoes anymore. Wanted to join the time bank but didn't feel like she could put anything in. So actually, when she filled in her form, as we spoke, she had the most beautiful handwriting and apparently had been a draftswoman. So she before computers had been <coughs> the person that had drawn out architects' plans and all those things. So she earns time credits by filling in certificates for voluntary organisations to give to their volunteers or young people or whatever. She writes Christmas cards for one of the <coughs> charities to send out to all their, their supporters. And in return, she's had a couple of teenagers come and clean up the greenhouse. She's had somebody come and bring the heavy... Um, grow bags and she waters the tomatoes and they grow and so everybody's happy. <laughs> um, apart from the teenagers who didn't want the photograph taking and any credit given to them whatsoever but we didn't manage to talk them into um, And I think the thing as well is, is breaking down those barriers that it's not a group of people who are the altruistic, good, healthy people who are doing something for the people that need it, it's that actually everybody needs something at some point in their lives. They might not at this very moment in time. It might just be that they need a break, it might be, actually they can cut the grass but they'd love not to have to. Um, it might be that they'd like some help uh, picking their kids up from school so they can work more hours. It can be all sorts of things, it doesn't have to be a, a huge need and a huge problem. It can be just, just talking to people and getting them to see that there's something that they need as well. It happens to all of us at, at some point, um, not just when we're older but at any point in our lives it's helping people to see this is an equal scheme. There might be people that need your help, but there's something that you can give. And sometimes people do just build up hundreds of hours of time credit, and what we do is encourage them to donate it to some voluntary organisations so they can spend it, or if they've got a neighbour that they think could do with some help, they can donate it there. But we try not to let that happen too much. We try and let people say, if you don't ask for somebody to do your ironing, that person can't earn any time credit. So it's a bit like money, it's got to keep Somebody's got to keep asking and, and somebody's got to keep spending, otherwise the whole thing will freeze. 
Um, we do actually have somebody who's a retired uh, military who loves ironing. And <laughs> see, he will actually come and collect it, do the ironing, and deliver it back. So we have actually you know, managed to run that yes, quite so a few did times. Did you bring it with you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if you've come to Dumfries, <laughs> maybe, but, but you, you'll find there are people who actually like ironing. It's quite surprising, really. And sometimes that's all it is, is just getting things done that you don't particularly want to do anymore. It's not necessarily that you can't do them. And that, once again, just levels everybody out. So it's not just about people needing help and people giving it. It's a very equal mix. What we actually do on a practical basis is we have the volunteers I think, uh, I added it up last night, I think between them they must do between 15 and 20 hours a week between them all. And what they do, we have a book of messages, it's that simple, this is what somebody needs. They run, we've got a database which you'll be able to have in Dumfries and Galloway which you log in what everybody's offered. Um, so if somebody needs some gardening doing it comes up with a list of people that offer it and they'll ring round and find out who's available. It's as simple as that. There's obviously, before that point, so many conversations happening and people trying to make those connections and um, people joining and all of those things. But that's the basic principle and it's really, really simple. You could make it awfully complicated, but actually it's really simple. Somebody needs something, whether it's an individual or a business or an organisation, somebody can do it. And obviously, the more people that join, the more able you are to say, yes, we've got somebody that can actually do that for you. I think uh, there are some things um, that are, you, you will immediately, you know, you want your ironing done, somebody needs their garden, but you can imagine that those things will make a difference to somebody, but we've had some more unusual uh, <coughs> changes as well, which just brings a bit of fun to the whole thing, one of which is uh, some Hebrew lessons. Somebody who was on a theology course and um, just happened to say I could do with somebody that speaks Hebrew and well, you know that's not going to happen in a while <laughs> and then the uh, literally a week later somebody came in and as she was leaving said oh by the way my first language is actually Hebrew <laughs> like wow <laughs> so we put this together and I thought that might be a one-off but last week between me doing the presentation and now somebody <clears> mistakenly <throat> bought a crochet pattern on eBay in Russian not quite sure how she managed it <laughs> but she's absolutely determined she wants to make this item and we've actually got somebody who speaks Russian. It's not their first language, but they'll be able to translate the pattern for us. So, you know, strange things do happen if you keep your mind open to them. <laughs> this is just, a, I'm just going to run a few photographs for you now just to bring it to life a little bit. What we've had um, is things like a, a mum who wanted to give a really good party to her, uh, her children, wasn't really sure she could afford it. Lots of people doing the big, you know, bouncy castle and hiring at the local hall and she couldn't afford to do all that. So we got different people in from the time bank to do uh, DJing, to do music. Uh, we had a juggler from another part of our girl come down. Um, people making birthday cakes, all, all of those things. So <coughs> it, it just uh, means that that person has given something of great value to their, to their kids and feels like she could do that because she'd already earned some time credits by doing shopping and picking up prescriptions and things like that for people. <coughs> we don't run a postal service. <laughs> I couldn't find an example of Edinburgh chip sauce. I don't know if anybody's been to Edinburgh, but, but on the chips you get this thing called chip sauce, which apparently is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And there was somebody in Argyle who was from <laughs> Edinburgh who really missed chip sauce. So you know, my kids like it, but I've never, as a, you know, I, I come from Edinburgh. My kids were, were brought up in Edinburgh and they love it, but. I should have looked at the programme to see that you were coming because you could have brought me some more. <laughs> <laughs> but basically we have somebody that goes to Edinburgh occasionally who picks up the, uh, the chip sauce and brings it back to, <laughs> to the poor person in our girl that's missing it. So. Bar <laughs> taste. Yeah. And, and I think as well, you know, if you're thinking about older people, it, it's things like not being where you grew up and, and having somebody pick up things from your area that you miss or, or even you know going and taking a photograph of something and sending it back to you all, all of those things that just make people feel connected still and, and that matter to people um, <laughs> this is Barry who is a, a real grafter and uh, this is uh, somebody who's just setting up uh, their own business they'll be uh, running a holiday let so they gave time credits for help with the flat pack furniture and it's one of those things where they, they could do it themselves but it was great just to have a party of people in for the day. Um, 
and somebody heard about this exchange happening and said that she she was not feeling well enough anymore and strong enough anymore to do those things but how much she wanted to support somebody that was trying to make their own way and get a business off the ground so she provided soup and cake to the work party that came in for the day and felt great about it and she you know in return she's had the uh, other things back that she wanted yeah, that's the finished room <laughs> this is uh, our youngest uh, town bank member who uh, goes occasionally with her mom the whole family have joined which is something that we try and encourage um, young people and kids you know for the whole family to be involved in things and they go every now and then and do the weeding which just has made a world of difference to the older lady that receives that because she feels like she's got a bit of pride still with all her neighbours beautiful gardens and she was getting a bit upset about the way it looked so in return she's had a, this little girl's had knitting lessons because her mum kind of same age as me didn't ever want to learn how to knit and wish she had uh, so she's had knitting lessons from another older time bank member and that's the garden uh, we've also had links with the local school because there are uh, art students that need um, to use sewing machines to do their final year projects in hires and things like that. Um, so we've had uh, links where students, if they join the time bank and earn some credits, they can then get sewing machine lessons. Um, we've also had some painting lessons from a local artist. And it's just, that's her finished project. Which is fab, isn't it? <laughs> um, it's just it's just a way of involving everybody, and you know it's 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 empowering to the young people that are involved as well. It's not just about giving something for you know the person that did the sewing machine lessons was great because she could get some help in her garden, but the the young person has learned a skill and feels like she did something to earn the credit. She visited an older person regularly to sweep the leaves and the snow off the path through the autumn and winter in order to earn some time credits. What we've found though in Argyle, I'm just talking about the Cowell Peninsula, the Danoon Time Bank, we've got five other time banks and they're all, like I said, they're all quite a, a little bit different. In Lock Guildpeds, which is a very, very small community, although it's where the council headquarters are, it's actually a very small community and it's been a lot harder to get things off the ground, partly because people already help one another out, partly because <coughs> a, th there just isn't as many people there to do the exchanges <coughs> with. Um, but what they've identified as a community through starting the time bank is actually would like something more regular. So they now actually meet and have a lunch a couple once a week. Uh, there are people that make the soup and earn time credits. There are people that come and spend their time credits uh, getting lifts and the, all those things. So it's just to say, although I'm giving you examples of what happens in Danoon, it might look completely different in each area in Dumfries. just an example of how we have regular get-togethers. We have lots of people that do crafts, so they now actually get together and sell and exchange things to one another. Uh, I've saved the best story for last. <laughs> but before, before I tell you the best story, uh, I could talk all day about how amazing the Town Bank is. I've seen how it's changed people's lives. I've seen, I've take, I take part in it myself, what a difference it actually makes. Um, as a busy mum, you know, to get the help, but also to be earning time credits doing things that I enjoy doing, like making jewellery, I earn credits, and I got somebody to tell my bathroom, which was fantastic. Um, there are challenges, and there's, there's no point saying that there isn't. I mean, there's a challenge to being in a rural area, but you can overcome that with a time bank, with people actually giving lifts to one another when they might have been reticent to do that beforehand. There can be a challenge getting people to see what it is and how it works and it's just a case of just keep having those conversations and picking the brains of the ones <coughs> that have already got time banks, just keep ringing up and seeing how it works. Our biggest challenge we've found is actually getting references because we try to do something so that we, we get to know people and it's not necessarily about excluding or including people, it might be that somebody's reference says that somebody's not too punctual in which case we wouldn't match them with somebody that needed to get to a hospital appointment, it can be that simple. But for some people to find those references or to be willing to ask friends or neighbours to do those things is something that we, ha we have to work with for a while. Um, we try and get around that by getting people in the office to help us for a while so that we're maybe getting to know them and eventually you kind of hear stories about somebody and you realise that there is a connection, there is somebody they can get a reference from, but it is a challenge. There is actually a Scottish Time Bank network which has got up and running again this year which is a great place to exchange ideas and pick up information and one of the recent discussions has been about insurance 
we don't actually have insurance. We very much tell people this is just like helping out your neighbour. If you get there and the ladder's a bit shovely, don't climb it. You know, get a ladder from somewhere else. Um, we do encourage people to tell their car insurers that they're volunteering, obviously, because that will protect them. But um, every time bank has a different perspective on that. So that there are lots of steps that you need to, to work through, but there are other people that are ahead in time and that will be able to support you with those things. And I guess locally as well, you'll find what, what does work and what doesn't work. Um, so the wedding, it's not the big royal wedding. It was better than that. Uh, this is uh, two town bank members who wanted a fairly simple wedding but actually couldn't afford uh, or want to spend actually all, all the money on having a fancy wedding. Um, they had they earned time credits for a year and saved them up so they, they looked after people's cats, they fixed dripping taps, they did runs to hospital for people, all sorts of different things and then they spent them on their wedding so their flowers, their invitations, their lifts to the wedding um, decorating the hall, everything was done through other time bank members who just entered into it with such a uh, spirit, it was great fun. We had somebody growing um, sweet peas, that's it, ready <laughs> for the for the wedding bouquet and all, all sorts of different things happening. Uh, and of course all those time bank members then got invited to the wedding so it was, <laughs> it, was, um, it was fabulous and it was the time bank member that did the photography for them and uh, somebody else that put them into a nice display and did all the adjusting with Photoshop or whatever. Uh, it's just uh, just an example to bring it to life. It, it can be very, very small things and it can be <coughs> huge things that make a big difference to people. Um, it's just uh, using your imagination really, I think, and seeing what happens. And we're still growing, although we've been running for quite a few years. So our latest thing is hopefully the council are actually going to join the Time Bank as a Time Bank member, which would mean that people can spend their credits on the local swimming pool and the local cafe, um, hopefully. We're not there yet, but we're, all, we're almost at that point. Uh, and more and more businesses getting involved as well, which makes a big difference. So it's constantly growing. Um, and I wish you all the best in Dumfries and Galloway.